Hey, hey, party people. Let's talk about exaggerated figures. I thought this would be a fun topic to cover now in October, beginning of October, for those of you who want to do some fun illustrations for Halloween. But, you know, I teach this module, or I used to teach this module in university, so that my design students could come up with some fun ideas for different kinds of figures to display their designs other than just, you know, kind of your standard fashion figure. Now, the thing is, you know, I'm a fashion designer. On average, I teach fashion design students. I have, a, I have students who are not fashion design students, but since they're the majority, the whole focus of this module was to showcase clothes. So most of my characters do have, you know, more human features, two arms, two legs, a neck, usually a head. You know, heads aren't completely necessary all the time unless you're a hat designer. But yeah, it's more human-esque. I mean, one of my favorite characters of all time is Ursula from The Little Mermaid, but she has like a few more legs than your average human. So it's not great for a lot of pant styles. I mean, her top half is still really cool. So if we did like a human version of her, that would still be really cool, but you get my drift, right? My method for beginners especially is to take an existing figure drawing and tweak it. As you become more experienced at figure drawing, you can start creating characters from scratch, right? But this is a stepping stone. In this video, I wanna go over three ways to exaggerate figures. Here are a couple of your typical eight head figures and that's kind of an average for adult human proportions, seven to eight heads. Kids have different proportions. Kids have larger heads in proportion to the rest of their bodies. Uh, look at babies. Babies are born where like a third of their body is head. Here is a nine head fashion figure. And nine heads are often used by people who want a more fashion look but are still more realistic because nine head people do exist in nature. You know, many models are nine head figures and uh, a lot of costume designers use a nine head. They use an eight head or nine head because they're working more with actors and actors come in a wider range of heights than most fashion models. And this is a 10 head figure, a classic fashion proportion. 10 head people exist but are super rare. They must be very, very tall and have a rather small head, like Nadia Auermann, one of my favorite models of all time. Look at her with all these other 90 supers and she's got her head down and her knees bent and she's still taller than everyone else. And they are all wearing the same heels and they're standing in a line. This is an 11 head figure, a very, very elongated fashion figure that not even a lot of fashion designers use because it's so extreme, but some evening wear designers love to use this look. Fashion illustrators who, who don't design, they just love to illustrate fashion-y things and not really care too much about realistic translation into clothes. They tend to love to use these figures, and I would use a figure like this in character development for like Morticia Adams or similar characters where the personality and the look is like super long and stretched out and feminine and, you know, that whole sort of thing. Now, I have videos on how to create regular and elongated fashion figures all the way up to the 11 head. So I'm gonna drop links to all of that in the description box below. Now, if you wanna go an extra step in exaggeration and elongation, this is my alien. Does this even fit on the screen? This is my alien. And again, I created a character that works with my design story and obviously does not look particularly human but still has a human-esque quality that allows the character to wear human clothes. And how I developed this 
was to take an existing pose and develop it. If you're familiar with my four steps to croquis building process, all those steps are in the videos below, then you know this is step one where I create the gesture, the pose of the figure according to my lengthwise proportions. Steps two, three, four later, here is my base fashion figure. And then, and this is a 10 head figure. And then I put this piece of tracing paper on top. I lined up the torso. And when I do elongation for design purposes, I tend to keep the torso pretty similar to realistic torso so that I'm not stretching out the design too much. Like it doesn't bother me if I stretch out the length of pants because it's just the length of pants. But the proportions in the torso of the design are more important. And so I keep these generally pretty close to real life. So I didn't elongate the torso much at all, but I super elongated the arms, the legs. I mean, I didn't elongate the legs that much, but I did taper them a lot so that they look even longer. And then I made the head much bigger to create that kind of alien look. I displaced the ears, you know, that sort of thing. A second way to exaggerate figures is to exaggerate the size and shape of specific body parts. This is where an understanding of human anatomy is so awesome. And that's why it's taught to everyone, to fashion designers, to animators, to cartoonists, so that when you know the shapes of actual human anatomy, you can understand them and be playful with them. One of the things I did with my alien figure was to exaggerate the pelvis because when you look at pop culture and you see a lot of these like little green men, little green aliens, sort of stereotypical cartoons, you notice they have these like super, you know, androgynous, prepubescent, like straightforward bodies. And I was, I wanted to do something super femme. And so I took the shape of your standard pelvis and I exaggerated. This is your iliac crest, this kind of like Mickey Mouse ear shape at the very top of your pelvis. And if you're someone who can feel that hip bone stick out, you know, when you're doing design measurements, it's your high hip measurement, approximately four inches off natural waist. Okay, that's your iliac crust that you are feeling. And I really exaggerated those hip shapes for this figure. This low hip measurement, this part that sticks out, that's actually your femur. When you understand anatomy, you can play with those features. If I were to go and like look at this alien figure again, I think it would be fun to exaggerate the joints even more, like maybe make the knees extra knobby, more protruding elbows, something. I don't know, but you can play around a lot. Mrs. Incredible is also an ex excellent example of exaggerating the figure through exaggerating the shape and size of specific body parts as opposed to elongating. Really, the exaggeration comes from how her arms are very thin, she's very busty, she has a very extreme hourglass. Her head is very large. Honestly, you'd be hard pressed to find kind of a comic book hero-esque sort of character of a woman who's not very hourglass. It's a nod to your stereotypical female comic book heroes, but more girth, a touch more realistic, kind of juicy, bouncy, rubbery, stretchy, like her you know, superpowers suggest. And her whole family has these exaggerated bodies that lend cues and clues to their characters and their powers. The daughter has some curves, but is much slimmer to emphasize that while going through awkward puberty and having power, she's still very much a girl, very different from her mom, who is a full grown woman. Dad is all brawn. Okay, Mr. Incredible is a classic warning against skipping leg day, okay? He's got a huge barrel chest and arms to emphasize his powers, which is his super strength. And Dash, he has like a huge head, 
Okay? He has a bigger head like kids do, and his powers are emphasized by his tiny little legs. He's fast because he's so fast, not because he has the advantage of a long stride. Jessica Rabbit is a hypersexualized version with her giant breasts and hips, very extreme hourglass. But you know, she's not bad. She's just drawn that way. She also has teeny tiny feet, which is something I've noticed a lot of animators and cartoonists tend to do with female characters. Would you like a little fake Chinese foot binding to go with your invisible corsets? The third way to exaggerate a figure is to push the pose. And sometimes you can push the pose in a way that goes beyond human ability. But I do think that, especially if you're a beginner to figure drawing, that you should start by pushing the pose a little, exaggerating the pose a little, little by little, before you get to the point where it's like super exaggerated and it is really moving beyond the boundaries of human ability without making it look too wonky, if you know what I mean, right? Again, I like to build off of existing things, existing figures, and you can do this, you know, with a fashion figure you've developed on your own or off of a figure. First of all, take a piece of tracing paper, lay it on top of your figure with a color pencil I love these. These are mechanical color pencils from Pilot, Pilot Color Enos. Draw out the angles of each body part, okay? So, you know, here's her rib cage, and that's the direction of her rib cage, and that's the direction of her bust. And that's the bottom of her rib cage. And here is her pelvis, and that's the direction of her pelvis. And that's the side, you know, she's wearing this thing and there's her side seam, right? And there's her butt. If you've watched my figure drawing videos, a lot of this is kind of like, oh yeah, I've seen her do that. <laughs> so you have the angles, you know, mark the ends of your body parts. So here's your thigh, here's your other thigh, her ankles in here, other ankles over here. and her face. If you want a tip on profile heads, here's the thing, is the top and bottom on average is the same as nose to back of head, okay? Not this most of her face, but the tip of her nose to the back of the head. This should be a perfect square. Anyway, so we have all the angles, right? And so if you want to exaggerate the pose, fold this over. I take a different pencil and start moving the angles. You don't have to move every angle. And I recommend that you don't push it too far, especially when you're drawing figures this size. This is a 10 and a half inch figure. Okay, and so maybe I want to arch her back a little more. I'm going to move all of this an eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to move this back an eighth of an inch. And at this point, you may be thinking, Zoe, I don't like her butt. I want to give her more butt, more thighs. But for me, especially for beginners, I recommend that you do one thing at a time so that you can exaggerate the pose and then exaggerate specific body parts afterwards, once you've nailed the pose, okay? So moving her waist forward, moving her hips back some. What do we wanna do with the bust? Maybe we just leave her bust where it is. And so we connect these, and her pelvis is going here, and it's shooting back, and so you have a more exaggerated figure. And then later, as you progress, you can start doing all kinds of fun things like exaggerating them more, you know, in ways that humans probably can't do unless they've been doing yoga since birth or some crap. But practice by adding small increments 
And then later on, once you've nailed the pose and everything, you could be like, I like her little flat chest. I want to give her a little bit more booty. So we're going to give her a little bit more booty. So we're going to give her some more thigh. Etc. Etc. Okay, that's it for exaggerated figures so far. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new today or enjoyed some of my ideas. I have a lot of other ideas for playing with figures, different kinds of croaky figures, that sort of thing. So let me know in the comments if you want videos on that kind of thing. I hope you do take my ideas and have fun with them. Come up with some cool croaky figures. Come up with some cool characters, some cool Halloween illustrations, and uh, have fun. Hashtag always be practicing. Let let me know what you're up to hashtag drawing with Zoe Hong on Instagram so I can see what you're up to and uh, share subscribe you know all that good stuff drop me your questions in the comment section below don't forget to check the description box for related videos and I will see you in the next video